Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spindle TV. I'm your host tonight, Lanny Shaughnessy, and um, I just wanted to jump in early to say hello to everybody that's popping in. Uh, Michael Mezalik, that's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, there are, you know, multiple approaches to different things, right? Um, but uh, I'm hoping tonight's class, we're going we're gonna to try to breeze through it, and I always say this every time, we're going to try to keep the time down. Uh, because I know that after, I mean, you know, usually after about an hour and a half, I'm probably better than a shot of NyQuil, you know, for you guys and girls. Uh, you probably get uh, some good sleep on Tuesday nights after sitting through <laughs> one of my classes. Um, but uh, we're going to try to uh, breeze through this very simply. We're going to talk about a couple of ways to, uh, we're going to make one design two ways. Uh, and we're going to look at two different approaches uh, to it and see if um, any of it is interesting or useful to you to kind of get the wheels rolling and ways to think about, uh, you know, your approach to things. I, um, in the, uh, uh, probably in the next week, next week class or whatever, I want to talk to you guys and girls uh, about, I want to do some kind of uh, like a tips class, like a a, a class that uh, covers all kinds of different tips uh, throughout, you know, designing or, you know, G code and things. Um, in that, I would uh, in that class next week, I would I would probably like to talk about some of the toolpaths that we have not discussed, like the uh, threading toolpath. You know, so I got a board here that uh, I cut some uh, threads in. Let me get that uh, started. But um, quarter twenty threads, you know. And, uh, you know, for, and look at this, look at this little thread cutter. Let me see if I can get this thing on screen to show up. It is so little. Um, I mean, if you compare it to my, like my, the tip of my thumb, this little threading bit, this thread, threading mill, it does, uh, 18 to 56, uh, you know, on the threads, but, uh, like, you know, 5, 16, 18, quarter, 20, some metric and all that, but it's, it's super, super small. Um, and uh, big shout out to uh, Micro 100. They're not sponsors or anything like that, but that's where I got uh, Micro 100 is where I got my threading mill. But we, we've never really kind of talked about the threading tool path and, and other things. And there's some tips that... Um, you know, uh, that, uh, I'd like to share with you guys that, you know, that, uh, you know, I've learned over the years and, uh, uh, uh and things in the Vetric software, it could be, you know, uh, simple shortcuts. It could be things, uh, you know, how to improve your cutting and your cuts and things like that. But we'll see about doing that, uh, next week. Uh, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get a, uh, kind of an outline of what I want to cover and the things I want to uh, show in there. And, uh, you know, um, I got a few shout outs from other channels that I want to give uh, from, you know, their videos uh, that uh, show some interesting uh, tips and things like that. And I want to kind of consolidate them and, and uh, share those with you as well. Uh, and of course, give them credit, uh, you know, for uh, doing it first. Um, but uh, so hopefully that'll be an, an interesting class next week. It'll kind of we, we talked about G code, um, a couple of classes back, you know, and, and a little bit just to kind of understand it a little. And then next week's class is going to show some design tips, but also some tips that can help with your G code and cleaning up your cuts and things like that. So hopefully it'll be good. Um, the, uh, Michael, what would be the most common thread sizes? Uh, I mean, you know, quarter 20, five, 16, 18, uh, you've got your M5 threads, uh, you know, if you're doing metric, uh, you know, uh, or M8. Um, but for me, you know, my most common threads are, uh, you know, quarter 20, 5, 16, 18. Those are the type of hardware I use. That's a quarter 20 bolt uh, here. And I really wish I could show you the inside of this hole. I wish I had a little microscope, uh, you know, to be able to show the threads. But I tried and the camera just doesn't pick them up very well uh, inside there. The lighting is terrible uh, as far as that goes, but uh, uh, the little threading toolpath that Vetric came out with in 10 or 10.5, uh, really nice. Uh, does a really good job. And we're going to talk about that more next week. I just want to give that little bit of a teaser and all. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a great way to, I mean, 
this is solid, uh, you know, and it's a great way uh, to kind of do some mechanical fastening to woods and, and other materials and stuff um, where you can just, you know, you don't need to put in a threaded insert or anything like that. Uh, those threads are, I mean, they're solid. I don't think they would tear out anytime soon unless you really exerted some force on them, you know, and stuff. But, uh, you know, not saying that this would be better than doing a threaded insert or something, but just something that's pretty cool. Uh, you can make all kinds of cool little projects uh, using, uh, you know, threads. And it doesn't have to be metal hardware. You can use uh, wooden hardware, too. You can make your own internal and external threads, so your own wooden nuts and bolts and hardware and stuff and, and things. It's pretty cool. So we'll talk about that. Let's see, what time? It's 7-11. Uh, so we're pretty close to getting started, so let's uh, jump right into it. Uh, this is one sign, two ways. Uh, we're going to start off in Vetric VCAR Pro to begin with. Uh, and uh, then we're going to move over to Aspire and show a different approach. Uh, and like I said, hopefully we can get the, through this in a timely manner. Let's switch over to camera number two for me. Uh, let's see here. Camera two. There we go. And let's get me down in the bottom left corner. Whoop, there I go. Awesome blossom. All right. And... Uh, Let's uh, get back to you guys and girls. All right, so uh, hopefully we can uh, have some fun with this. We are in Vetric VCAR Pro, like I said. Let's first of all, let's talk about uh, the job setup for this project. Uh, I'd like this to be, um, now of course my table is 24 by 40, so I'm designing vertically, just so it's easier for you guys to watch so you're not sitting here all tilted head and looking at like, what's he making? Uh, so we're gonna design it upright. But before I can uh, make this project, no, I'm going to have to rotate the project 90 degrees because the longer length on my uh, 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 CNC is the x-axis. And uh, this project is going to be 32 inches uh, tall uh, and about 24 inches wide. We'll probably fall right into that 22 to 24 inch width. And uh, that's what I've got set up here. So I've got uh, along the x for right now, 24, and along the y, 32. Uh, that way it's kind of vertical for our designing uh, and stuff and on the thickness now because we're gonna we're gonna you know this is gonna be another design we're gonna go kind of thick on this I'm gonna go about one and a half inch thick material uh, could possibly be two inch thick material uh, you know as well but uh, you know we're gonna go one and a half inch thick that's easy enough to make up and things like that um, we're gonna be referencing off the material surface for the Z0 position and we're going to work from the bottom left corner for the XY datum, our start position, our XY zero. Uh, I've got the model resolution. I don't have any, you know, we're going to throw some models in here, but I got the model resolution just set to the very high because that's kind of my default. And we're going to click OK, and that's going to take us to our job setup. Now, already on the screen, I have a rectangle drawn here. And uh, that rectangle in its size is 21 inches wide by 18 inches tall. And that's what we're going to, uh, that's kind of kind of be a, a base for us to, to start with and everything. So what I'd like to do is uh, I'm going to build from kind of the bottom up. And uh, so the first thing that I want to do in here is I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. And on the ellipse tool, I'm going to take and snap. Make sure you have smart snapping and geometry snapping turned on in your software. If you have, uh, you know, the if your version has the smart snapping and, and geometry snapping feature, make sure that's on. Uh, it's very useful because I want to snap right to the center of this rectangle here. And we can tell when we're at the center because we get that crosshair with that diagonal uh, line on it. And I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and I'm just going to pull out an oval. I'd like it to have a little bit of depth to it, probably about like that. There we go, good. And then what I wanna do is I would like to take my arc tool, draw arc tool, and I would like to come over to this corner here and I'm gonna snap, I wanna find kind of like a natural transition. I'd love to be able to snap to the uh, tangent, uh, which is right there. And um, then I'm gonna kind of pull up a small arc. So basically we kind of have this nice swoop motion here. 
And um, let's see here. Let me come in here in my, ooh, there we go. Uh, let's go into node editing on this and let me pull this arc down just a little bit right about there nice now what i'm going to do with this is uh no sense in trying to duplicate that and draw it twice over here i'm just going to mirror it so we're going to use the mirror tool and we're going to create a mirror copy and flip it about the job center everything is centered on here so we're going to flip it horizontally and we're going to get that side there too now I can take my scissor tool here and um, I'm just going to, I can either click, you know, to trim or if I hold down the left mouse button, every line that I touch that's intersecting, it will clear out, All right? Either one of the two. And that's going to give me a nice little profile down here. Now, one of the things I do want to do if I zoom in, I zoom in really, really tall. You can see that I didn't quite trim. If we look at this line right here, it doesn't quite meet up. I didn't trim quite there, so I want to take my scissors and I want to uh, just take and trim that away. And when I close that tool, I'm still not right there, right? You see as we zoom in, we're creating that overlap and all. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to go into node editing and I'm actually going to pull this node up to here and snap it there. Good job. And the same thing over here, if I zoom in, uh, I'm gonna do what I did before. I'm gonna trim once, and then I'm gonna come down here uh, where it trimmed to, and in node editing, I'm just gonna pull this one up to there so everything stays nice and concentric on both sides. Wonderful, and now I can um, come in select all of the vectors and join them join the two vectors i've selected and close them up as one vector okay so now i have kind of this bottom shape profile here all right cool beans now in here uh in this area down here i would like to uh come in and uh draw another ellipse if you will i'm going to kind of get right on the center you'll see that dotted line i don't know if you can see that dotted line there but uh that dotted line shows up when I, you know showing me i'm at the center here and i want to pull out an ellipse that i'll get it moved up to the right position and all but i want it to kind of have uh somewhat that similar shape and i'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard and just bump that up and what I'd like is I'd like to, I'm eyeballing it here, but I'd like to have kind of a, almost a consistent kind of gap, you know, through here until it starts widening out, right? So a nice little uh, gap right here. And I'm actually going to go up a little bit more because I forgot that I'm going to offset my rectangle up. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit more and then we'll get that in position uh, in a little bit later, a little bit later there. All right. So um, let's see here. Let's make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to hold down my shift key to keep it centered where it's at. And I'm going to scale it up just a little bit more. There we go. And then we'll get it in its final position in a moment. All right. And uh, welcome everybody else is popping in now. Barry Chandler, welcome and all that good stuff. All right. So now, you know, uh, up here, I'm going to have some... Uh, raised areas where I'm going to do uh, some V carving and stuff, but I want a little bit of a delicate, or a, a, not a delicate, but a kind of a nice looking uh, design and stuff. So I'm going to go into my clip art and I'm not going to use a model uh, because we're going to kind of, uh, uh, you know, create the vectors here, but I want to go into my uh, panels and shields. Okay. And on the on the left hand side, and you know it's kind of uh, let me see, am I maxed out here? There we go. Um, on my panels of shells now, my head's in the way and stuff, but I'll show you uh, the profile that I would um, like to use. Okay, uh, it's going to be about uh, just as an example, it's going to be about this kind of shape, right? So, kind of this kind of profile shape here 
Now, I could very easily, uh, you know, get this sized up where I want it and everything, and I could use my modeling trace uh, boundary tool here and create that vector boundary that I need for this and then get rid of that model, right? Or I could uh, come in and uh, draw the vectors out, right? So what I'll do is uh, for the first one here, I'm going to get this sized up kind of about how I want it. There we go. And let's uh, let's thin it down just a little bit. Um, that looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and use that trace tool to trace that boundary. And then I'm going to get rid of that model, right? And so that gives me this vector boundary here, there. But you know, it's not because of the model. It's not very. It's not a very clean vector, and it's not the kind of. It's really not the best way to to do it. Um, but I wanted to show you that you could, right? You know, but there would be some cleanup that I would have to do. So if I were cleaning this up, uh, you know, I'd go into node editing mode, uh, and uh, these nodes here, I would be hitting D on my keyboard to delete them. This one as well. And then I would turn this into a, uh, not that big of an arc, but an arc. And, you know, I would smooth that line out, right? And I got a little hiccup right there. But that's that's kind of a lot of work, uh, you know, uh, for, you know, just cleaning up to get what I want. So I'm going to draw the vector. And I always start out with a rectangle. So let's do this one up here. Okay. So I always start out with a rectangle. And... Uh, let's get that rectangle centered on the board, left or right. There we go. And then uh, I'm going to take and grab a circle tool and kind of pull out a uh, circle here. I'm going to mirror that circle over to the other side, right? So it's kind of concentric and everything. And then, you know, as we come in here, we have a bit of an arc right here. And I'm going to use my guideline to help me out. Uh, on my guideline, I'm going to bring my guideline down and I would like it to kind of step up here. And then I'm going to use my arc tool. And I can even I can even use a guideline from the side here and say, OK, I want my arc to, you know, be, you know, something like that. And I could use my arc tool and click here. Here and kind of pull out. An arc that I think looks appropriate all that wonderful jazz. And now that I have that, once again, I can mirror that. That's the distort tool, Lenny. I can mirror that to the other side, flip horizontally. Uh, and I'm also going to, you know, uh, do it on the bottoms here, right? So in order to get these to flip down to the bottom of this rectangle, I'm going to take a line tool and I'm going to snap to the center of my rectangle and draw a line right straight across. Oop, that's an arc tool, Laney. Let's uh, do that again. The polyline tool. Uh, let's get uh, to the center there and snap that across 90 degrees or zero degrees. And now I can select both of my vectors here, both of my arcs, and I can select those. I'm going to group them together and then I'm going to select my line last. So these two are selected first, the lines last. And when I mirror, I'm going to just flip about that line, right? So that gets those down there. And now um, it's just a matter of doing some uh, trimming, right? So let's take our scissor tool and let's, uh, and of course I didn't snap my, uh, <laughs> I didn't snap my arc there and I did that, uh, it's short all the way across. So I'm gonna back myself up Okay, to here, and let me fix my arc. I could have just used the extend tool, but I'm going to extend that arc to there. There we go. And um, let's do that one more time. Let's mirror that horizontally. Draw our center line. Select both of our arcs. I'm going to hit G on the keyboard to group them together. So that way I can just come here and select my line and flip about line. There we go. Much better. Now we can come in and do some trimming. So I can go ahead and 
uh, trim away these corners and these inside vectors and all to create that uh, shape, right? And I actually like this shape. I want it kind of more narrow than the one down below. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. Let me get this one. Uh, all right, I've got some, let me select that. All right, I've got some duplicates going on here. Oh, I need to ungroup. That's what it is, not a duplicate. I thought it was a duplicate, but it's not. Um, let me get. Let me turn this group off as well. I'm hitting U for ungroup. Ungroup. And um, now I can close that vector up. There we go. Much better. All right, now, now that I have it uh, here, I want to go ahead and uh, kind of get it sized the way I want. Uh, I could have done this at the beginning and all, but I would like it just a little bit bigger. I want to keep the aspect ratio. So right about there. And then I'm going to hold the control key and just drag this straight down. And we're going to go right about here. All right. Cool beans. There we go. All right. Now, that looks good. All right. Now, uh, I do want to add a couple of 3D elements into this design. Uh, and um, I will uh, be doing that after I draw all the vectors. I'm going to come back and I'm going to add a couple of 3D elements in here so it'll have a combination. Now, we're not going to create them from scratch. We're going to use them, what, our, what we have in our clip art that came with our software. Uh, and uh, we're just going to get some nice little swirly things going on here and stuff and kind of uh, tie things together. All right, now that I have this lower area here, and this is gonna be kind of the bottom of my sign, I'm now gonna just use my arrow keys and bring this down because I want as much headroom up here as possible. Uh, so I'm gonna bring this down probably right about there is good. And now I'm gonna start um, clicking uh, uh, or creating this upper part. Now this upper part, uh, we're gonna start off with a rectangle and I'm actually going to uh, come in and draw a rectangle the full width of my 24 inches. And I'm gonna come down to right about here. Uh, I always kind of start off with a rectangle uh, and I build my shapes from that, okay? Uh, with that, Let's go into our double click to put it in transform mode and let's pull this down about here. And let's pull this down about here. Very good. All right, now I wanna start kind of creating my, my shape. Uh, so here we go. So the first thing I would like to do is um, I want to kind of have uh, another rectangle here that we're gonna use. We're gonna trim away some of this stuff, but we're gonna go another rectangle. We're gonna go probably right about there, and we're gonna make sure it's centered from left to right. There we go. And on top of that uh, rectangle, I want to draw an, or uh, create an arc. And so, what I'd like to do is come right about back here. So let's use our guidelines so I can lay it out for you. Uh, and uh, we're gonna come probably right about there. And let's get rid of this guideline right about here. And I am, if I were to measure from here to this guideline horizontally, uh, I'm about 2.175 inches, um, and uh, that's good. And what I'd like to do is, let me see here. Let me measure from here to the edge of my board. So 3.807. So I'm gonna just kind of round that, round about that. So. Let's drag this guideline to and snap it to the edge here. 
and then I'm gonna right click on that guideline and I'm gonna change it and make a relative guide. Uh, we're gonna go about three and an eighth inch over, so we'll go 3.125 to the left or to the right, so it's a positive number. Create that guide, okay? And then I'm going to take this guideline to the other side, boom. And I'm gonna make a relative guide, 3.125, but a negative, because I'm going to the left, right? So that'll give me some guidelines. I love guidelines for helping me lay out uh, a design and stuff. Now, uh, in here, I want another guideline, so I'm gonna right click on this one, and I'm gonna create a relative guide, means a parallel relative guide, and I want this to be um, uh, brought over probably another two inches. So we'll go two inches, there we go. And same thing on this one, but it's gonna be a negative two inches, relative negative two inches. Cool beans. All right, now with these guidelines and everything here, in node editing on this little rectangle that I drew, we're going to put a uh, node or insert a point here on this guideline. And we're gonna insert a point here on this guideline. And now you really wanna zoom in uh, because when we insert points, you know, if you're not zoomed in, you, you're gonna miss your mark, right? And I did, so I wanna move this node and snap it back over to this guideline there. I need to do the same thing on the other side because I missed that one as well. Uh, so nodes don't really snap uh, very well to um, guidelines when you're just pointing and clicking. And sometimes you really got to zoom in. You know what I mean? You just got to do it. Um, now, in here, let me look at my design. We're going to have, this is going to step up and it's going to come over to that and there. Okay, great. So this span between the two nodes right here, I want to turn that into an arc, okay? Uh, I want to turn that into an arc and I want to pull that arc down uh, to, I'm going to literally just kind of snap it right up there. So we have this kind of nice arc here and I'm going to eventually, when everything is done, I'll get everything centered on my board. So I have a little gap of wood up there and a little gap of wood down here, but I'm going to use the top of my material here to snap to, to create that arc. All right. Now this corner on my two rulers here, this little corner right here, if I click on it, that'll hide my guidelines, right? I don't need them anymore. Uh, and um, now I can, you know, come in and, and continue doing what I wanted to do. All right, now what I'd like to do on this is I'm going to, uh, actually, let me turn those guidelines back on. Um, no, they're not gonna be useful to me here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want at this peak right here, I want a straight line to come out uh, and then I want it to step down and then I'm going to go into kind of another arc till we get to right here. Uh, so I will turn my guidelines back on. <laughs> they are going to help me because uh, I need to know where to put my point here and stuff. Um, but let's take on this guideline here, let's make a relative guide to the right. That's a positive number. And I'm just going to go over about, uh, one inch, about one inch. So let's go one inch and create that guide. And that looks good. Yep. One inch there. And let's go over here and do the same thing. Relative guide, but this time a negative cause it's going to the left and we're gonna create that there. Now, right here, I have another place where I can insert a point. I'm gonna zoom in this time. Uh, and in my node editing, it doesn't like, it wants to open up my guideline there. So I'm gonna put a point right next to it, insert a point, and then I'm gonna drag that point over because it wants to open my properties for my guidelines when I put the mouse right over it. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Insert a point and pull that right over. All right, cool beans. So this arc is going to come down. It's going to have a little step across. And then I want it to uh, kind of 
come down and then have a little arc into this plane right here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna use this guideline right here. Uh, that way I have a specific place where I'm putting a point and I'm gonna pop it over there and snap it to that and I'll do the same thing over here. Insert a point, let me zoom in and drag it and snap it to there, there we go. And I literally uh, am going to drag this node straight down, okay? And you can see the distance there uh, and all. Uh, I'm gonna go about, one point one five and hit enter okay didn't quite hit that mark there uh, because that distance was actually how far i was drawing the line this way not how far i was bringing it down so here's a cool trick if i select this node first this node last if i hit the letter x which is left to right it'll align that back up for me very cool now, in some cases, you know, in some cases we can mirror, uh, you know, things, but it, it, I have never really gotten that to work for me quite right. So I'm just going to do exactly what I did here is I'm going to pull this down uh, and I'm going to type in 1.15 and hit enter. All right. To get that position. And that's going to kind of give me my height, you know, so everything is nice and level there. Uh, but I need to select that node and that node and hit the letter X to move that over. And now I want to make sure these two, and you can tell there's, they're, they're not exactly the same height. Uh, but that's wonderful. No problem with that because I can select this node right here. Come all the way over, hold the shift key down and select this node and I need it to move up and down. That's the letter Y. I can hit Y and pull it right up into place, right? Cool beans. All right, now we're gonna be trimming away this little area right here so I don't need to mess with that, but I do wanna take an arc and I wanna snap right here and here at this corner and I wanna kinda of pull an arc down, and I'm gonna be getting rid of this line right here anyway, so it doesn't matter if my arc is you know, past that line and stuff, but I'm actually going to uh, use this line. I'm just gonna pull this straight down and snap to it there. Cool beans. Uh, so we have almost like a little bit of a hitch up. I might change that, let me change that. Let me change that, I wanna pull it up just a little bit there we go. That's good. And uh, I'm not going to try to duplicate that on the other side. I'm just going to mirror it. Mirror, mirror, mirror whenever you can. Uh, very helpful tool uh, to get us where we need to be. Now, once again, I can come in and uh, I'm going to just take my scissors and trim this away and this away. Okay, so now we're getting, let's turn our grid out there. Now we're getting our top part of this object shaped uh, and everything. And what I'd like to do is I'm gonna pull, in node editing, I'm gonna pull this down so I have more of a nicer looking curve there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that node. I'm gonna come right over here, hold the shift key down to select this node and hit the letter Y to pull that one down to the exact same height, right? Cool beans, okay. Now, now that I have this shape, we're going to be uh, trimming away some lines in a moment, but not right now. We're going to let's finish up what we're what we're doing, uh, and then um, we'll uh, get everything um, kind of squared away. So from this arc here, I want it to step down just like it is the same the, the height that it's at right here, and I'm going to now kind of create an overhead arc you know uh, instead of a concave I'm gonna go convex and I'm gonna bring that all the way over to here all right so let's do another arc snap to this corner and uh, I'm just gonna pick a point any point 
Uh, let's go down right about, let's go here so I can kind of make a pretty decent arc there. Nice job. And once again, mirror, mirror horizontally to the other side. Okay, now I can start trimming and cleaning up. So we're gonna get rid of this line, this outside line here, this outside line here, and this line here. And that's gonna create our top of our, you know, kind of our profile. We're not done yet, almost there. Uh, and um, now we're going to, what I'm gonna do is I would like this to, from this arc here, I'd like it to actually kind of curve inward to this point right here. So I'm actually going to use node editing and I'm gonna pull this node straight across snap it to there and then I'm going to turn this into an arc and kind of on my arc here I'm going to go a distance of about let me see what's going to look good Two point seven, kind of like that shape there. There we go. And on this side, once again, I'm going to pull this over, snap to here, right click and turn that to an arc, and bring this into two point seven. There we go. All right, to create that shape. It's looking weird right now, but trust me, it's going to look great here in just a moment. All right, now. Where that arc ends, we're gonna come over a certain distance. I'm gonna use my uh, guidelines again to help me out here, okay? Uh, I'm actually going to um, create a, another guide, just a little further over, because this one's too far over, so I'm gonna right click on it. And I'm gonna create a relative guide uh, just about a uh, half inch away. Let's go three quarter. Uh, three quarter, seven five. Cool beans. All right, same thing over here, but it's going to be a negative three quarter because we're going to the left. Love guidelines. All right, and now here, this is going to come in. It's going to come straight across. All right, and then it's going to have a little bit of an arc coming down here. It's going to have another little kind of jog, and then it's going to come down to our big uh, arc in the middle and all that wonderful jazz. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is, now that I have this guideline, it's going to give me a place to insert a point. And again, zoom in because you're never, I, you know, you're never really going to hit the mark. You're going to kind of drag it into place. Uh, let's do the same thing over here. I want to kind of keep things concentric. I could always draw one half, cut it in half, and mirror it to the other side, right? We could do that as well. But I just, I'm just going to, you know, make sure whatever I do on the left, I do on the right. All right, so we have our little straight lip here, and. I'm going to go ahead and start shaping this. Uh, let's go with a arc. Ooh, that's a big old arc. We're going to go down to right about. No, let's, I'm sorry. Let's not do that as an arc. Let's go back to a line. I'm going to draw a circle here. And I want a kind of a nice little bump. Uh, so let's go about like that and trim that away so it's going to create that kind of bump and now I can start kind of pulling this down I want this to kind of the whole thing to kind of arc down I need to take my let's turn our guidelines off I need to take my two uh, sign placards here and lower them down a little bit so they're gonna go right about there because this is going to let's go node editing and right here on these center points, this center point right here, it's a little clear rectangle. You can't barely see it, but I'm actually going to insert a point on that center line. And the same thing over here, insert a point on this center line. This way I can, um, 
you know, start to use my down arrow and pull this down. Pull that down, not that far down, right about there. And I'm going to take this point. I'm sorry, not that point. Uh, right here on this center line, I'm going to insert a point over here and insert a point and I'm going to select those two nodes those two nodes there and there and um, I'm actually going this is going to come across I'm going to bring those down a little bit so I can move them down separately let's take these two nodes here and here, so holding the shift key, pull those two right about there. And then I'm gonna come in and uh, turn these into arcs and create a nice little arc. Uh, 1.3, let's see, 1.4, 1.3 there. This one is gonna actually go upward uh, arc gonna kind of come up let's go 1.2 on that one and then this one here arc and let's go 1.6 there so we're gonna do the same thing over here Okay, on this first arc, uh, we're going to pull it uh, one point. Wait, which way did I go on that one? Yeah, I went up. Uh, let's undo that because I need my measurement. 1.3 there. This arc, 1.2. Come on, undo that. 1.2, I'll get my math here right in a second, right there. And then this bark comes downward, 1.6, right there. Okay, so almost kind of looks like a bat wing there for a minute. Um, and uh, let's bring this. I'm going to take this node right here. I'm going to pull it to the left and I'm going to type in one and hit enter. And that means it's going to pull it to the left one inch. Okay. And the same thing here. I'm going to pull this to the right and type in one enter, pull that to the right. I'm going to get rid of this point in the middle and pull this down about like that. And that's going to be the shape of my upper sides here. Now, notice I'm over the outside of my board right here. So what we're going to do is just select this. and Let's get out of node editing mode. We're going to select this entire vector. I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm just going to kind of bring it in a little bit. Okay. Now I can do some trimming. Okay. I can do some trimming. Do, 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 do. Trim that away. And I'm actually going to, uh, and uh, I'm actually going to undo that. I don't want to trim that yet. I need that vector to be closed for a minute. You'll see what we'll do with that in just a second. All right. Uh, so now I've got this upper shape here. And there's one last uh, shape that I want to create. It is going to go right about here when. Um, when I do all the trimming, it's going to land right about here, but we still got to do some offsets and stuff. So let's get the last uh, two shapes in. And this time, I'm going to go with a three point polygon, which is a triangle. Okay. Let's see how big I want that. Right about there. I'm going to flip that triangle. And that was not the mirror tool. I'm going to kind of mirror that. I'm going to turn off create a mirror copy. 
turn off flip about center and I just want to flip it vertically so it's upside down like that very good I want to come in here right about here and what I'd like to do with this is I should be able to come in here and select all three of these nodes and hit S to smooth that out to kind of create this shape okay so let's undo that again so you can see basically I have a triangle here and I'm selecting all the nodes and I'm hitting the letter S to smooth that out and it kind of creates these Bezier curves and uh, I want that kind of almost that shape there I'm happy with that if I wanted to I could lower this down a little bit but I think I'm good right there all right let's uh draw our last shape and then we'll start doing our offsets and create some text and all that wonderful stuff hopefully you guys are with me uh and uh, all that wonderful stuff and uh staying with me we're going to be using these vectors to create that second version sign right uh we're going to show you the second way to create a sign we're going to be using that but let's get them drawn up on this one and create this sign first uh one last uh one last vector that i want to create uh two two last vectors uh, this one's actually, we're going to do a rectangle here, right about there. Uh, first thing I want to do on this guy is make sure I am centered left to right, which I am, and I'm going to do the same thing here, make sure that's centered, there we go. And on this one, we're just going to come in, let me turn my lines on here, and I'm going to... Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to insert a point. Um, I'm on the wrong line. Let's get down here on the right line. Thank you. I was wondering why it wasn't working for me. I'm going to insert a point there and drag it over to uh, that for a minute. Same thing on this side. Insert a point. Zoom in drag it over and snap to that guideline and uh what i want to do here is uh this is going to have it's gonna we're gonna uh kind of create a uh a an arc on this edge right here and so what i want to do is i'm going to delete this point there delete this point there to kind of create this uh not a parallelogram, uh, but you know, uh, this shape here. <laughs> and uh, on this one, I'm gonna take it and make it an arc, and I'm gonna pull that arc 0.8 inches arc, pull that arc 0.8 inches, there we go. So that's nice. And then let's make a relative guide to the right. Let's go over two, two and a half inches. Let's go over two and a half inch. I had to think about that for a second. And same thing here on this one. Let's go over negative two and a half inches. Cool beans. And in node editing, I'm going to insert a point. And again, zoom in, kind of snap it to there insert a point snap that to there and between these two points we're going to create an arc and this time the arc is going to go up here right uh, and I'm going to go up to uh, you know not not too dramatic of an arc just a nice little arc here but what I'm going to do is uh, once I have that arc, I actually want 
this to have a little step up before it goes into the arc there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, I am going to, I wanna be precise. I want to be precise. Let's use our guides. That's the only going to be the only precise way. Uh, let's go over literally like a quarter of an inch. Ooh, that's too much. Uh, control. I don't know why I do Control Z. That was stupid. Uh, close that. Let's delete that guide. Quarter of an inch, way too much. Uh, let's just go like. 20 thousandths of an inch to the left Laney to the left negative there we go get rid of that guide we're almost there just got these two little nodes to add here let's go uh, 20 thousandths of an inch in the positive direction create that and the reason why I'm doing that is because um, You'll see. <laughs> Let's go into note editing. Let me just show you. It's easier to show you than explain it, and then I'll explain it after the fact. But let's go into note editing and uh, do our zoom in, insert a point, and drag it over to here. That didn't quite snap right. There we go. All right, and let's do the same thing really quickly on the other side. Insert a point, zoom in, snap it to there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab, let's turn off the guidelines here. I'm actually gonna grab that point that's on the left, or the right, sorry, this point that's on the left, and this point that's in the middle, and I'm gonna use the up arrow key on the keyboard and pull those up to right about, uh, there and I'm pretty happy with that angle but I'd actually like it to be just a slight bit more so I'm gonna take this node right here again I'm gonna pull it left and I'm gonna pull it left uh, 16th of an inch 0 0.0625 get that little bit of an angle going on there and I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm gonna grab this node and pull it to the right 0 0.0625 and hit enter pull that over there and that way I have that angle and that's good now of course this line this rectangle line is going to be gone later uh, once we do our profiles but we're going to have that shape there and then the very last last shape is we're going to do a circle right here and move it down I'm using the arrow keys I'm just going to move it down to right about there okay good all the shapes all the vector shapes are drawn for this design now let's do our offsets and let's start creating some tool paths to get things raised up we'll put some text and stuff in there and don't forget like i said we're going to add a couple of models uh in just a minute all right here we go so first thing i'd like to do is on the rectangle i want a pretty nice size lip around that edge I mean maybe like an inch or an inch and a quarter so I'm gonna offset this rectangle inward one let's do that again 1.25 I want to create or keep sharp corners where they are uh, and uh, let's click offset okay so let's inch and a quarter yeah that's good let's move this up Create some nice spacing there, about like that. That looks decent. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here, offset inward, inch and a quarter. All right, creating sharp corners where they may be. All right, cool beans. Uh, and what that means, um,
Let's undo that. We'll undo that and that uh, one more time. Undo, undo, close that. Undo. Let's get rid of that. One more time. Let's go. I'm going to go one inch, one inch offset. I'll, I, I'd like to have that quarter of an inch. I don't know why, but we're going to offset inward and this one one inch. Perfect. Okay. Now I can bring this down into place where I want it. I'd like it to have a little bit of a gap at the top. There we go. About like that looks good. And this shape here, um, you know, if I pulled this down, you know, we're, we're not quite, you know, that shape, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna stretch this out a little bit, not that much. About like that and make sure I'm centered left to right. There we go. And I'm gonna move that up into place until I have a relatively decent looking uh, line here. I'm a little heavy on this side, not so much on this side. So let's go about there and Let's hold the shift key and pull this in just a little bit. Okay, so not quite a circle, but a circle. All right, good going there. Wonderful. Now, 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 how now, brown cow? Um, now, I need this vector to come in uh, and be closed off and kind of take on this shape around here uh, for a, uh, a pocket cut that I'm going to be doing. So we're going to take these two vectors and group them together so the software treats it as one. Okay. And I'm going to select that and then I'm going to come in here and select this vector here and I'm going to use the subtract tool, trim tool, trim tool, sorry, trim tool. And basically that last vector that I selected, this uh, top piece here, is my boundary. So I wanna clear everything inside this boundary. And when I do that, it's gonna take and redraw this vector here, okay, uh, in this fashion, and uh, kinda close that off, right? And then what I want to do is um, I want I want to undo that. I want to do a little offset on this vector about uh, let's go um, 20 thousandths of an inch. Let's offset outward 0 0.02, 0 0.02. And that way we can use that as the boundary. Okay. Um, and uh, let's do that one more time. Select these two, rec this two rectangles right here. Come in and select this vector here. And bear with me. Yep, uh, we're gonna trim that, uh, trim, clear inside the boundary. Perfect, now I wanna delete this boundary that I created, and that's gonna give me this little kind of gap right here, you know, on both sides. Okay, nice, nice. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I'm actually going to uh, do something that you wouldn't normally do, but we're gonna separate it on a different layer, so it's not gonna be confusing for us. We're gonna go up to our layer tool here, and we're gonna create a new layer, and I'm gonna call this my pocket, inner pocket, inner pocket boundary. And with that layer active and selected, oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's uh, delete that one, okay. With that layer active, 
I'm going to offset this again. Uh, or I'm not, I'm not going to offset. I'm sorry. I'm going to copy and paste it. Control C, Control V, or I could have went up here and did copy paste, or I could have right clicked on the screen and did copy paste right here. But I literally want that right on top of the other one. And you're like, whoa, you're creating a duplicate. Yes, I know. Uh, but um, I want this boundary. I want to move it over to that inner pocket boundary. I want that vector there. And then I also want to do the same thing with this. I'm going to copy and paste, and I'm using Control C and Control V to create that duplicate. And I want to copy that over to that layer as well. And what I'm going to do is turn off my design. So I have those two vectors here. And I'm going to trim away what I don't want. I don't want this vector here. Okay. So let me ungroup this ungroup okay I'm gonna go into node editing because remember I have that gap right so it doesn't overlap I'm gonna go over to node editing and I don't care I'm just using the up arrow straight up right until I got some overlapping lines I don't care how far they are or anything because I'm just I need to overlap there so I can trim this away okay trim this away Trim this and this. And I've basically, I've created kind of two things. One, I've got a profile for my outside profile. And I have a vector for the inside, a pocket cut that I'm going to use. I'm going to create uh, a color. Let's make these things red so we can kind of see them. And let's turn on our other layer. And so we have this outside boundary vector. And then now we have an inside pocket vector that we can use. Okay. Hopefully you guys understood what I just did there and uh, all that wonderful stuff for you. All right. Now let's go ahead and uh, do two more offsets um, on these two objects right here. Actually, let's do uh, offsets on this, 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 and this one too. Uh, and this one's going to be a different offset. It's going to be a bigger, but on these off on these selected objects here, we're going to offset inward and I want to go, I want a nice, decent little offset, but I don't know how it's going to look up here. So let's go, let's go with uh three eighths point three seven five. Okay. And so that will, uh, be fine there. Have this weird line right there. We'll fix that in a minute. But uh, that will 375 is going to be a little much. Uh, let's go to 1875. Let's cut that in half. 1875 offset. Okay, I can live with that. I like that. Okay, now I, when this one offset here. Uh, it created this uh, kind of overlap right there, and uh, which was weird. So we're going to use our scissors and trim away. Is it going to let me trim? Let's see. That and that. Do I have an overlap there? Yeah. It should let me trim. Come on now. Interesting. Let's take a look at why that did that. I want to undo this and I want to take a look at my vectors really well here. And I, I want to see why that line got created. Let's go in here and go to join and make sure that they are closed. They are. Let's go into node editing and uh, you know, our nodes look normal. Uh, we're going to smooth them out a little bit, but I'm going to offset them by themselves inward, create sharp corners, select new 1875. Interesting. All right. That's not a problem. I can go into node editing here and I can grab these two. Oh, not that. Don't grab it like that. Uh, I can grab these two nodes right here and uh, I can move them to the right. 
just to create that overlap. I'll do the same thing here. Grab these two nodes, move them over to the left to create that overlap. Might as well, while I'm in node editing mode, be proficient and do the same thing down here. That was interesting why those lines got created. I'm not sure why uh, something uh, happened, but now I'm just going to come in and uh, I could weld these objects or I could just trim, right? So we're just going to trim. We could use the weld tool as well to combine those shapes, but trim is fine. All right, so now I need to create my other uh, 3 16 offset. This one, this one, and this one. Offset inward, 3 16 There we go. Wonderful. So these are kind of my uh, uh, boundaries, but now these offsets, I don't want them on the same layer as my inner pocket boundary. So I'm going to select them, those offsets, that one too, and I want to move them to a new layer, and I'm just going to call this my uh, inner offsets. Or I could say V-carve offsets or what have you because I'm going to do a V-bit profile cut. But we're going to just call them inner offsets. And let's make them a different color. We'll go blue. Kind of, there we go. All right. We've got our offsets up on this one. I actually want a little bit of a wider offset on this one. Uh, so I want to go inward. And I want to go a full quarter or three-eighths? Let me look at what a quarter looks like. No, I want to go three-eighths. Let's go three-seven-five. Three-seven-five. Perfect. Uh, and that takes care of everything. Okay. Let's start creating some tool paths, ladies and gentlemen, so you can see how this is going to come together. Now this is gonna be levels, right? So this upper part, and there is some other vectors I wanna create back here in the back. Uh, you'll see those in just a moment. But um, the uh, we're gonna create levels. This is gonna be the top level. This is gonna be recessed down just a little bit lower so it looks like this is kind of glued right on top of the board. Uh, and then these are gonna be sticking up as well. Uh, so let's look at our tool pass here. And let's start with this toolpath first. This one right here. I'm going to hold down my shift key, select this, 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 and all my outside vectors here. Okay. And this boundary. Right. And I'm going to go with a pocket cut. And since all of this is going to get milled down, uh, you know, so it looks like this is raised up up here, uh, I'm going to make my pocket cut deeper than what you know you would think it would be um, but we're gonna go a total of what are we gonna go a total of let's go three quarters all right I'm gonna use a quarter inch end mill for this so I'm gonna remove the 16th inch uh, knowing that it's, I'm going to get some radiuses here and everything, and that's fine. But uh, let's create that pocket cut. Uh, let's see, I want to do, I want to cut with the grain. Yeah, I want to cut with the grain. I don't want to do it as an offset. I want to cut with the grain, and I'm going to go 90 degrees. I'm going to have to change that when I rotate this whole part 90 degrees, but um, let's calculate that. And uh, let's preview that visible toolpath. Okay. Now. I need a vector that uses this outside profile here and this bottom line right here, okay? So I need a vector that uses this outside profile and this bottom line. So what I'm gonna do 
is if you recall, we have these two vectors right here, um, but I'm missing my kind of my connection right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this my lower pocket vectors. Let's turn this, oh, turn that on and let's turn this off. Let's turn that off and turn this back on. And I'm going to select this and this, this vector here and this vector here. And I'm going to copy it to that layer. So I can turn this off now and I have this again. And once again, I'm going to go into node editing mode. Let's get off the toolpath here for a minute. And remember, I want to take this and just kind of move it over to create that overlap, if you will. Create this, move that up to create that overlap, and that way I can do some trimming. Uh, basically, on this, I need to trim away this outside all the way around, and these two things right here, and the inside vector, right? I need this profile, right? And while, I'm, while I've got that profile kind of visible, I'm going to create a tool path for that pocket cut and it's going to cut down a quarter, maybe three eighths of an inch. Let's see what would look better. Three eighths, uh, three eighths. Yeah. 0.375. Oops. Too many decimal points. 375. And we're going to use a quarter inch end mill and we're going to calculate that tool path. Okay. So we're going to preview that visible tool path. And what that's going to do is that's going to take this whole thing and lower this whole thing. And this would be the toolpath that I would actually run first. We're going to make it smarter. We're going to work smarter, not harder. This toolpath I would actually run first. So it mills all this down. And then this toolpath here would actually start at three eighths of an inch and cut down another three eighths of an inch to get that same, uh, you know, three quarter inch depth that I have there. So now I have one big pocket tool path that's removing all this material down to three eighths. And then I have this inner tool path that's gonna come down another three eighths from there. Okay. So uh, if we turn off that tool path and we look, so far this is what we're looking like. Let's go ahead and uh, create a profile tool path so you can really get a visual of the outside you know, what the outside is looking like, okay? So let's do a profile cut on this vector right here. And I'll organize the tool pass in the proper order, but this is just for visual, so you can kind of start getting the visual. And this is gonna cut all the way through the material, 1.5 inches. Uh, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill and we're going to uh, do something a little different with this tool path. I want to, you know, I'm going to be taking, uh, let's edit our tool here. I'm going to be taking an eighth of an inch per pass, right? So that's going to be 12 passes. Now, as I go around uh, this uh, profile cut and everything, um, Every time it steps down, I'm going to see a witness line around the outer edge of the material. And so I want to use a, a separate last pass for this because I want it to cut a little further out from the line for the first 11 passes. And then on that 12th pass, I want it to do a full cut right up to this line. Uh, so I have a nice clean cut and those witness lines are gone. Those pass witness lines are gone. And my allowance, how far I want to be away, is going to be very small. So it may be around uh, 10 thousandths of an inch, or it could be 0 0.005. You know, just it depends on the rigidity of your CNC machine uh, and things like that. Uh, but we don't want to be too far away. Uh, but um, we want to be enough to where um, when, and let's go 0 0.15. There we go. Uh, 0 0.015. When, uh, when, we, when we cut over, um, we're going to be removing this amount of material on that very last pass, you know, up against the line. Uh, we're not going to reverse the direction. We're going to calculate this, and this is going to be my outside. Let's go ahead and start naming these. Outside profile. 
0 0.25 EM in mil. Let's calculate that. All right, uh, let's preview that visible toolpath. Okay, now notice here, let's get rid of this and all. Notice now it kind of starts looking, we have levels, but if we zoom in, notice my pocket cut left a little onion skin right around that lower level. Uh, you can see the little onion skin right there. Um, you know, I could clean that up with, you know, a little razor knife and some, uh, you know, sanding and all that, but I don't want to. I want to, I'll let my end mill do that. So what I want to do is, what I want to do is, on that profile here, I'm going to go into node editing. I could offset it, right? But I don't want to offset this line, just these outer boundaries. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these vectors here and I'm going to just bump them down literally with my down arrow. I'm going to go one, let's go two times. That's, that's good. And then over here, I'm going to take this vector. Or that node, sorry, that node and that node. And I'm going to bump that over two times there. Come over and select this node and this node using, oops, just not that one. Uh, just using my arrow keys, bump that over two times there. And I'm going to recalculate um, that uh, pocket cut. And that pocket cut should be second in the list no it's first in the list I'm an idiot it's first in the list uh, I'm just going to recalculate it okay there we go and that should have allowed the bit to um, come in and clean up. And on this pocket cut, I want to make sure you see how it says no profile pass. I want to do a profile pass last. I want it to come and clean up that profile here on that, you know, from that raster cut. Uh, so let's calculate that preview that visible tool path. And let's see if that bumping of those nodes out two times uh, cleaned it up. Let's find out. Looks like it's doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. Nice. Okay. So now we're getting some levels going on here. Okay. All right. Now I went with a straight pocket cut, right? I went with a straight pocket cut uh, on this and I could have went with like a V carve cut where I had a nice uh, kind of angled profile here and stuff but I'm happy with that with just being a kind of a straight up profile and everything, you know, our pocket cut and stuff. Uh, but one thing that I want to show you here is because I was rastering when it got to these points here, boom, 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 boom here, that uh, it created these ridges, right? Those tool marks there. And even though my pocket cut, um, uh, you know, on my pocket cut, this pocket cut here, uh, it's because I didn't have no last pass there to clean that up, clean those passes up and stuff. So what I want to make sure of is that what I want to make darn sure of is that I have my vectors selected, right, for the inner stuff. And I want to make sure I have uh, last pass for the profile, I want to do the profile last, and I want to calculate that because what I want it to do is when it uh, comes in and starts cutting, at the very end, I want it to come in and make sure it cleans up those edges, right? Uh, so I have nice smooth edges uh, and everything, you know, here and stuff. 
right? It gets rid of those kind of back, you know, those, those raster marks. All right, so there is uh, one part of the sign there. Wonderful. All right, let's come up here. Uh, let's come up here and we're gonna select this inner boundary. We're gonna select, um, let's turn on all of our vectors. There we go. Uh, I didn't need to turn on all the vectors, but we're gonna select this here and all these outside boundaries right here. Okay. And um, before we do that, let's put some text in here because I, I want my text to be raised too in here before I pocket this toolpath. So let's get some text in here. Let's make this sign look like something. Uh, so what I'd like to do is um, we'll start in here. We'll start in here. Uh, let's say that this is, uh, oh, what can we do? My last name. No, my last name. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's do, oh, come on, bear with me a second. Let's do like a shop sign right let's do a shop sign kind of that kind of thing or a business sign type of thing so let's uh come in here and i'm gonna go uh spindle tv productions okay and uh let's go kind of bold We'll make it bigger in just a minute. Let's get it centered left to right. And I want a little bit more room here on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these guys uh, and go into node editing, node editing. I'm gonna take these nodes and these nodes and I'm gonna use my up arrow and give me a little bit more raise there. There we go, cool beans. All right, we're gonna take uh, Spindle TV. Let's get out of node editing mode. Size that up a bit. Nice. And I wanna make sure it's centered in here, so I'm gonna hold down my shift key and select this rectangle and center it. And then I'm actually gonna use the up arrow key because I, I wanna be kind of visually eyeball this. There we go. So I'm centered left, right, and now I'm up and down visually. I'm centered there. And uh, I'd like a little bit more spacing around between that T and V. So I'm going to put my mouse here and hold the shift key. And I'm using the edit text spacing and curve tool, guys. Edit text spacing and curve tool. And if I hold down my shift key, it pushes the letters apart, right? So... Um, That looks good. All right, cool. Let's get that uh, centered left to right again. All right, so Spindle TV Productions. Very nice. Now, um, I want uh, kind of a crest here of sorts, uh, which would generally be kind of my logo. Uh, and... Um, and Currently, right now, my logo is like a play button uh, type of thing, but it is being rebranded. You'll see that launch here just shortly. All the graphic work has been done and everything, so uh, I don't want to give throw the cat out of the bag just yet. So I'm going to kind of uh, we're gonna fake it till we make it. Uh, I am going to draw a triangle. Uh, Three-sided triangle. Let's go here. I'm gonna go 90 degrees. I'm gonna hit the letter Z, uh, Z uh, uh, zero on my keyboard twice to go 90, and I'm going to center that inside that circle. There we go. Uh, kind of give it. Uh, I'd like it. I'd actually kind of like it a little bit more over. This way, I mean, that's, remember my circle is not quite round. And so that looks a little odd. So I'm gonna actually eyeball this visually. So 
So we're going to have kind of a play button there just for shits and giggles. There we go. All right. Now, um, in here, I want to uh, type in, I want to uh, uh, custom woodworking. Let's go bold and size this up. We're going to be a little bit more creative with the fonts on these. Uh, you don't want to go with, with too many fonts, but you know I want to go something a little bit better than Arial. Um, let's see here. That looks good. All right, let's get that sized appropriately. And get it centered. Align to center. There we go. Uh, let's bring this in just a little bit. And now that I'm squishing this font, I don't know. Let's look at a different font really quickly. That was Copper Gothic. Uh, let's see here. No. This is where word mark.it is a time saver. Uh, but um, let me just uh, get down to my, where's royal signage at? Um, royal R, royal signage. Nah. All right, let's stick with. Let's stick with that. That doesn't actually look too bad. I think it'll look good when it's done. All right. Now my next one's uh, going to be down here. Same font. Uh, custom work woodworking and uh, CNC training. All right. CNC training. Let's get that centered on this one. Let's close our tool. Holding that shift key down to select this boundary last so I can align to that last item there. Get that uh, going. Uh, that looks good. Perfect. And down here, let's do kind of like uh, an established or, or what have you. Uh, let's go. Um, let's go since. Since. Uh, 2010, get that centered, get it centered, align center, there we go, and on this one, That one looks a little funky, doesn't it? It looks a little weird. Uh, let me let me change the font up on this one. We're just going to go with a kind of a, uh, a, de a basic decorative kind of font, uh, and let's go with where's my marketing font? Actually, that copper. Where's it at? Copper plated. Oh, that's what it is. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, we don't want that then. That's not that's that's not what we want, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see, marketing. That's title. Where's M M M? Marketing script.
All right, that looks good, but we need to get rid of these overlapping lines. So we're gonna weld, weld that together and just replace it. There we go. All right, now, okay. Uh, up here, I actually wanna bring in a graphic uh, and everything uh, to uh, a graphic uh, vector. And um, I want to, um, Let's see here. Bear with me a minute. My uh, spirit animal, if you will. Let's go. All right, let's import an image from downloads. Let's grab this. Okay, let's bring this up here and zoom in. All right, turn off this and bring this up. Preview, apply, and close. Delete that image because I don't want it in there. Uh, and uh, ungroup that and get rid of this trash. We'll see what this looks like. Uh, it's not quite a tiger. It's more of a lion. Tiger's kind of my spirit animal. It's not my brand or my logo or anything. We're just making this stuff up as we go, guys. This is a fictitious sign. Um, but uh, that's going to be kind of our crest, if you will. And uh, I would most likely use my actual logo crest uh, when I when um, when I release it, and you guys can see it. All right. So now we have some fill in here, right? Now we've got some things going on. Let's go ahead and come back up here before we, uh, you know, before we we started here and we haven't done anything up here or down here yet. So you guys still with me? Y'all still awake? Y'all doing good? All right, let's pause for a quick second and let's answer a quick question here. Question, if you had not showed us the X and Y tip, could you tell us where we could have found out about those tips and use them? Jeff, uh, the uh, usually the manual, right? Uh, if we go to help and the help contents, manual and we scroll down to our node editing tool and click on that we have our node editing here uh, there is uh, just some basic information here uh, but uh, you know there's some basic information uh, in all um, under keyboard shortcuts we may be able to find uh, node editing right here so under the category of node editing these are all the keyboard shortcuts for node editing and uh, the um, enter the value you know move a node from its original position uh, you know with the cursor enter a value and hit enter and it'll move over that distance here so those keyboard shortcuts right so in the manual um, under the quick keys uh, keyboard shortcuts there and then of course uh, in the actual uh let's go back one screen in note and there's just some general information here but the keyboard shortcuts because that's what they are they're keyboard shortcuts so hopefully that answered your question where you would find that information the manual is a 400 page interactive manual at your disposal and uh use it guys and girls read it use it and read it okay very, very uh, useful the manual is. Okay, all right, let's go in here and uh, let's create some tool paths. So we're gonna select all of our outside vectors right here. Uh, we're going to come over and on this one, I do want a nice profiled edge here. 
So I'm actually going to do it as a V carve tool path. V carve tool path. Uh, start depth of zero with a flat depth. How flat I want this pocket right here. Uh, a flat depth. I'm going to go uh, 0.2 inches. I'm using a 60 degree quarter inch V bit. Uh, I'm uh, going to use a clearance tool of a quarter inch in the mill. Offset cut is fine. We could raster it as well. Um, I like cutting with the grain, but some people like going around and around. But if you're if you're not trimmed just right, or if you're using a uh, a down cut spiral bit and all, you're gonna get these little tool marks and stuff at the bottom of your cut. And then we're gonna have to do a separate last pass, uh, you know, of that pocket to uh, kind of clean up where that down cut spiral would be uh, and all that. So. I'm going to I'm going to raster it. That's what I do. That's what I like. You can do raster offset, but I like carving with the grain, with the grain, right? Okay. And the grain is going to be running this way along the length of the board. So 90 degrees. Um, we're going to calculate that toolpath. There we go. Uh, let's preview that visible toolpath. Kind of gives it that uh, raised up look and all. Uh, we'll add some colors in just a minute to kind of separate some things so you can see. But now let's go ahead and uh, do some other cuts here. So we're going to take this. Uh, I want this uh, line kind of uh, raised but V-carved like it is. So on this line here, I'm going to select the outside profile right here. Just the outside profile, and I'm going to offset it outward just like maybe a, a 32nd or a 16th of an inch. Let's go a 16th and see what that is. Yeah, 16th looks good. Okay. And I'm going to select the inside vectors here and this inside vector here. Okay, this will be my top crest. Um, and it's going to be the same height as Spindle TV. So we'll select this in Spindle TV Productions as well as the play button. We'll do that as well. And let's go to a V carve tool path. And this time I'm only going to go down an eighth of an inch. Could go 0.125 or 0.13. Uh, and again, now I have some smaller areas here, so I am going to add an additional tool. I'm going to add an eighth inch end mill to get in there and clean up uh, where that quarter inch can't fit. So let's calculate that tool path and preview that visible tool path. Got to move along, move along. All right. So uh, let's add some quick color here uh, in your toolpath preview you can give a toolpath color here uh, and and everything you know to kind of you know uh, make things stand out you know depending on what you got going on there but on this these three toolpaths here I'm gonna go with kind of a uh, let's go with kind of a brown fill kind of a brown fill there all right, so we have that uh, on this pocket cut. Let's go with kind of a, a hunter green is my favorite color. So we're going to go with a kind of a hunter green. All right, uh, I actually like it a little darker than that. But um, yeah, those colors may not go together, but uh, you'll get the idea. All right, now down here below, we're going to V carve these in and we're going to do a profile cut with our V bit to create a little nice outline. We're not going to raise them up like we did up, up above. So here on these two vectors or these three vectors, sorry, these three vectors right here, we're going to do a profile tool path. We're going to go, uh, I'm going to go 0.125 inches deep. 
with my 60 degree V bit. on the line I should name these toolpaths so they look nice and clean preview that visible toolpath now notice when I calculated that nothing happened right nothing happened that's because this surface is down 3 eighths of an inch right so I need to start at 0.375 and cut down that eighth of an inch so that way it carves in. Okay. Cool beans. Um, yep, nice little outline there. And then on our text, we're going to V carve our text. Oops. Hold down that shift key, not the cap lock key. The shift key will work better. Uh, and we're going to go with a V carve toolpath. Okay, V carve toolpath. Uh, no flat depth on this. No clearance tool, just my 60 degree V bit. And we're going to calculate that. Once again, I need to start at 3 eighths of an inch, 0.375, because that's where it is. Too many decimal points. And calculate that. Okay, so we're getting there. All right, uh, let's add a little bit more color here. So on our uh, pocket cut in here, uh, this pocket cut here, I want to go with uh, I want to go with kind of a a tan color um, because we're not quite done with this pocket yet. Uh, you'll see in a moment. We're not quite done with it yet. But I'm going to go with kind of a tan. And let's go more colors. And on that tan, let's go custom. And let's pull that down a little bit so it's a little bit darker. I don't want it too orange. Matter of fact, let's go into the kind of the uh, browns here. There we go. It's kind of about like that. Click OK. And uh, so we have kind of that tan color going on. My text and uh, V carved lines, I'm just going to go with black. So uh, the uh, text and V carved lines, we're going to go black and black. There we go. Nice. Uh, and then this upper pocket, nothing. So, so far, this is what we're looking like. Let's go ahead and uh, get it off maple. I'm going to go with uh, like a walnut. Uh, let's go up to my walnut number three here. Now, nah, let's go cherry. Cherry, cherry. Go. All right. Now that I've changed it to cherry, my colors don't look very good or appetizing. Um, really quickly, I'm going to change that hunter green to a maroon. Go. And I'm going to change that funky tan color, uh, which is this color here, here and here. We're gonna go with the hunter green there. So go hunter green, hunter green, and hunter green. Not bad, not bad. Uh, of course, that's not the way I'm gonna paint it, but you know, you get the idea, right? Okay, now, you know, this is a very basic uh, sign here. I would like to add some other elements uh, in here. Um, I would like to add some other elements. I've already got my since 2010 down here and stuff. Um, but, you know, I would probably uh, like to create some uh, little 3D swishes or something right here, kind of connecting this circle to this and stuff. And, uh, 
let's drop them in right now. And then we got to move on. Uh, I'm allocating, uh, I'm hoping the, now that we have all the vectors drawn, part two, the second version of the sign is going to be much quicker. Uh, let's go into um, decorative. In decorative, let's scroll down. And I'm going to grab this little swish right here. Turn off our guidelines. Okie dokie. Uh, let me see what other swishes I got going on here. Okay, that's good. I'll just deal with this all the way around. Uh, let's uh, rotate that 90 degrees, not 90, about 45. You guys still with me? I'm trying to read, see if make sure you have any. Have trouble sleeping? Read the manual. Well, the great thing, real quick, uh, who said that? Um, have trouble sleeping? Read the manual, Bruce. Uh, yeah, in a sense, the manual's dry. But the great thing about it is, is let's say that I wanted to know something about uh, one of my tools. Let's say the rectangle tool. I can click on this little question mark up here, get help on this, and it's going to open that manual up straight to the page of that rectangle tool and it's only a one page read you know so not bad if i want to take and learn about two tools a day i can digest that very easily by uh and uh, uh let's uh let's go back to our vetric and let's go to the circle tool and click on the little question mark right here and it'll open right up to the circle tool right so i can get right to where i want to get to uh, and it's a short one page read and then I can go back and play with you know what I've just read and learned about the keyboard shortcuts and other things and if I do that with a couple of tools a day it's easy to digest and um, very uh, you know useful right so then you know I can get through that you know learning about my tools very quickly right so cool beans uh, let's close our circle tool and let's get back to what we were doing. I want to rotate this all the way around. And I actually want to mirror it. Okay. I want it, I want to mirror it where it's kind of facing. Uh, the different direction. So I'm going to go into the mirror tool and I want to flip it horizontally. Okay, and that way I can come in and almost pretend that I'm connecting these two things. I don't want it overlapping my pockets or any of that stuff. A little bit more about like that. Uh, let's actually um, go in because I did a V carve toolpath like my V bit's got to be able to get in here without hitting my model, right? Um, let's take that and mirror it to the other side. Uh, create copy, flip horizontally. Create a mirror copy. Let's do that again. There we go. And if I had some kind of flourish there, we'll make something uh, in Aspire when we go there. But uh, you know, it would it would go there. And then um, I would like to let's hold down the Control key and make a copy. This one, I want to mirror it back. Oh, you son of a gun. Hold on a second. Turn off, create mirror copy, and flip about job center. And I want to flip this vertically this time. Okay. Uh, and then horizontally. There we go. And this one, I'm going to size up a little bit more. Just pick a spot. And then I want to create a mirror copy, flip about job center, and flip horizontally over to there. 
and uh, you know I could go on and embellish this a little bit more with some you know raised uh, you know effects and all but in this probably isn't the most appropriate model here uh, and stuff but in order to be able to carve this I need to select these models right to be able to add them as design I need to create a boundary around them right uh, so in my modeling tab up here I want to create a vector boundary around those because because uh, when I come and do this pocket cut in here I want it to uh, not not cut this material away because that's where my 3d model is gonna be you know so now that we have those models in there let's uh, come back into this lower pocket right here this toolpath and add in these vectors okay and in these vectors nice and uh, calculate that uh, including those in there this time that way uh, when it carves that material is still there you know that material is uh, you know still there where those models are you know it, it's cutting around now of course I'm stupid uh, not I'm not stupid but uh, when I selected those four boundaries uh, they were grouped together, right? So I need to ungroup them. Stupid is a bad word. Uh, I am uh, wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking properly. I need to ungroup those uh, and not have these vectors turned on up here. They need to stay off. So just these because we're doing this lower pocket. All right, cool beans. All right, now in the upper pocket, same thing right uh, and we're just protecting that material okay so in the upper pocket uh, which is this one I need to add these vectors in here okay and calculate that okay preview that visible toolpath All right, so we've got those in there. Now, I, I, they're going to be 3D models. So now, this is the important part. My setup, material setup, it's the set button right here. Okay? Now, two of these models, um, they're not going to be positioned low in the material. And two of them are. They're going to be down at the bottom of this you know three quarter inch pocket right because we milled off the first three eighths and then we got another three eighths down there so that's three quarters of an inch deep and these are down in there so what I have to do is in my modeling tab I need to create another level and the two top flourishes let me find them those two guys right there I'm gonna drag them up into another level okay up here so that way I can turn that level off because I'm gonna have to change my model position in my material twice to create the two tool paths that I need what I mean by that is in this project here these these guys right here this is cutting down you know an eighth of an inch deep and my model is 0.1486 I have a choice I either make my model an eighth of an inch deep or I make my pocket 0.1486 to match the height of my model in this case I'm just going to go uh, and did I bear with me a second I'm saying I went an eighth of an inch in this pocket but I believe that pocket was a quarter wasn't it it's point two point two okay so let me rephrase what I just said here this model the bottom of the model needs to be point two inches down below the surface because that's how deep this pocket is cutting the model is only point one four six eight now I could plump that model up if we look at the 3d view 
uh, let's come in here, right? Um, I could build the height of that model up. Let's say I change that height to uh, 0.1875 and click apply. It's going to kind of just fatten it up a little bit, right? I could even go 0.2, right? You know, the height of my, and then I don't have to, you know, do anything. 0.2, and it's gonna kind of just plump it up, give it a little bit more meat, and that's fine, good. So now my model's 0.2, and so the bottom of the model is 0.2 down. Hey, that's perfect, it matches my uh, pocket cut, all that cool stuff, and of course, um, let's turn on the appropriate level. It's the top one up here, there we go. And on those two models, I need to change them to 0 0.2, 0.2, click apply. I don't have to, uh, not 0 0.2, uh, not 0 0.02, 0, ah, 0.2, there we go. Um, I don't have to change their size at all. I just need to make sure if I, if they're, if I'm not going to change the size, then I need to slide this slide bar down and make sure that the bottom of the model, my, my zero plane, my model Z plane is 0.2 inches from the top, right? You know, uh, that kind of thing. So, um, and it is my model Z plane is negative 0.2. That's good. So let's create that pocket cut again, or not that pocket cut. Sorry. Uh, let's now create our 3D finish. And 0.2 is not a whole lot of material to take off in one pass. But if you're leery about that, then do a rough cut first. Okay. Uh, and uh, in this case, I'll use a quarter inch end mill using the model as the boundary. No boundary offset. Uh, and calculate. Okay. Uh, that's telling me that I need to change my pass depth and everything. So I'm going to change my pass depth to a 16th of an inch per pass and calculate that again. There we go. And the only thing that the rough cut is removing is this little bit of material right here. So uh, preview that visible toolpath. It's only taken that off. So is a rough cut even worth adding in that extra tool change? Um, totally up to you. Uh, let's do a finish cut. Model as the boundary. This time I want the bit, I'm gonna let the bit go past the boundary by an eighth of an inch by its full diameter. Uh, and uh, we're gonna calculate that toolpath. Preview the visible toolpath. And what I'm hoping is that, uh, let's turn the color off so it all blends. Uh, what I'm hoping is, is see I've got some debris around here. Some debris right here uh, that I need to clean up. And it uh, by going out that uh, offsetting outward that eighth of an inch, I hit my circle. Right? So, what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to take these and I'm going to hold down my alternate key. First of all, let me select that. Hold your shift key down when you're selecting more than one item. Wonderful. I'm going to hold down my alternate key as I rotate this around and that's going to make this model snap in kind of uh, 15 degree increments and I'm gonna rotate that 15 degrees and I'm actually going to drag it outward and down a bit right there I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna mirror this one over so I don't have to rotate again Create a mirror copy, flip about job center horizontally. Okay, wonderful. Once again, we're going to uh, come in here on that 3D finish cut. 
still using the model as the boundary. Uh, my tool is a 16th inch tapered ball nose, which is fine. But this time, now that I'm moved away a little bit more, I want the bit to go past about uh, 0.1875. Calculate. Good, I'm not gonna hit my design or my circle. So let's uh, reset that preview. Preview our pocket cuts. The V carve tool path. Come on, Lane. We may have to do with a second sign tomorrow or something, man, because it's already nine o'clock. Uh, trying to hurry up, trying to hurry up, trying to hurry up. Uh, but I'm trying not to go talk too fast to where y'all understand what I'm saying. Um, but uh, I shouldn't add it in these 3D models. Uh, I could have said just embellish it any way you want, but I want to add them in just to show you how to create that, and then we're going to move over to the second sign. Because uh, we're already, you know, I know, like I said, you guys are probably falling asleep. Like I said, I'm better than a shot of NyQuil, I'm sure. Okay, so uh, like a goofball, I didn't recalculate the rough cut. And I didn't recalculate the pocket cut, which is this one. Make sure my vectors are still selected. They are. Uh, recalculate that because I moved them, right? So I got to recalculate. All right, let's go ahead and um, preview these tool paths. <clears throat> so we have that first pocket cut taking away this whole lower half uh, and everything down to 3 eighths of an inch followed by our second pocket cut, which is gonna take that inner area down another three eighths of an inch, give us a nice looking frame around that outer edge and those raised elements and stuff. Cool beans. Uh, we got our upper pocket uh, pocketing out. And there's our little model. Uh, and on our model, Calculate. There we go. And on the pocket cut, I didn't have this vector selected. <laughs> All right, let's calculate that. Okay, get on, Lenny, get on. This is when I start. When I start rushing, I start screwing up. So I'm not going to rush. Uh, 3D rough, 3D finish. Preview the visible tool pass. That's that lower part or that main pocket taking that whole lower half that gives that upper part kind of where it looks like it's raised up, like it's sitting on top of this uh, piece um, and everything. Finally, okay, there we go. Wonderful job. All right, our text. Uh, let's go ahead and get our uh, text previewed. All right, so we got that raised kind of that lion and that text. So that's going to be our upper part there. Uh, wonderful. Uh, down below, our V carve text down below here. Uh, let's preview that toolpath. Nice. Our profile, let's preview that toolpath. Okay, nice. All right, so we got one more 3D finish uh, toolpath to create. Here. Uh, and on this one now, I need to turn this level off, turn this level on, okay? And on the uh, 3D finish cut, notice it doesn't have a start depth and a finish depth kind of thing, you know? Um, we need on this one here in our material setup, this model 
is actually down three quarters. So our model is 0.2. So I need to go uh, 0.75 minus 0.2 equals. And so my model Z plane is at 0.75 down at the bottom of that pocket. That's what we need. So all of this upper stuff on that model is getting milled away, right? So we're going to click OK. Now, when we click OK, it's going to ask if we want to recalculate all the tool paths. No, we do not. We just had to lower that model down into the material. So we're, we're only uh, calculating or creating these two new tool paths. So our 3D rough. Uh, on our visible models, these two down here, uh, we're going to use the model as the boundary with a quarter inch end mill. We're going to calculate that. Okay, so it's going to uh, remove all of that material down. Okay, and then our 3D finish, same model as the boundary, same boundary offset. We're going to calculate that. Preview that finished tool path. All right, so we have, uh, you know, that model in that area and stuff. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, we could, uh, you know, kind of get an idea what that would look like. And, of course, around this model right here, it would be painted red, too. But I really can't fill that in. Um, if I give that a color of maroon it's going to color the sorry uh bear with me a second this one is no color no fill uh this one is maroon if i do that it's going to uh cover the whole thing so but anyway you get the general idea um you know it could be painted but let's get rid of this and all and so we have a very nice uh, kind of a shop sign. Very, you know, this could be hanging on a, you know, a nice uh, wrought iron post out in front of your, you know, on your street and all that stuff. And, you know, it uh, looks good. But again, you can embellish it and play around a little bit more. But the main thing was this was creating the vectors, you know, so we can create those different shapes. We can create those different tool paths and those different levels and everything. Um, and really uh, have some fun with it. We could do this on a small scale. We don't have to have just a square rectangle board with, you know, maybe a little border V grooved in it and some, you know, text or raised up and all. We can give it some, you know, some detail. We could, you know, imagine, if you will, on a small sign, right? Imagine if I had a uh, small little narrow sign here, okay? And I came in and uh, let's draw this up kind of big here. And, you know, this sign, this whole rectangle right here would be the profile cut out all the way around there. But now I have one level raised above the other, right? Same as we have this top and bottom here. I can do, you know, whatever in here. And then, you know, uh, you know, it could be a, a, a logo again or whatever. And then some text. But we can create, it doesn't have to be just square cookie cutters type stuff or oval shape and all. We can give it levels. We can give it depth and stuff uh, and all. And so, uh, you know, uh, very simply. Okay. All right. You guys with me on that? All right. Uh, can you do this on both sides? Yes. Ron, Ro Roger Brown says, hey, can you do this as a two-sided project? So if it is hanging up on the street, it looks the same from both sides. Yes. Here's the trick of it all but though okay um when we carve one side this is unlevel right it's unlevel so when we flip this part over it's going to want to teeter-totter so we need to make sure we need to make sure that we shim you know uh this is a uh i believe i went point three or something on that that height uh, 375 38 so I need to put some 38 spacer blocks here you know to so my board is level right and then I also need to make sure you know I cut this down a total of three eighths and a total of three quarters right remember I'm only using inch and a half material so I would have to reduce that pocket to about you know a half inch so that when I cut the other side down a half inch kind of thing um, 
I have like a little bit of meat in the middle, right? So we either make our material thicker or we reduce kind of our depths of cut and stuff, you know, and all. But yes, we can absolutely do this on a two-sided project. But we absolutely need to do, um, we absolutely need to do this on a, uh, uh, we have to add, uh, absolutely have to add some kind of shims, right? Some kind of spacer blocks so that our this end, this side could be supported, right? When we flip it over. Um, <clears throat> okay, on the uh, 3D rough, two passes, won't the bit carve a lot of air uh, since the uh, V-carve is down at 3 8 of an inch start? Bob Frail asked, uh, Bob, yeah, Frail. Bob, no, because if you remember, let's reset this preview for a moment and uh, let's look at our pocket cuts. Outside profile, um, and that's enough to be able to see what I'm about to tell you. Let's go preview visible toolpath. So if you remember, this first pocket cut is removing this level down at, uh, you know, to, to this, this whole area here down three eighths of an inch. So from zero, we are gonna, you know, that 3D rough cut, we are going to be, um, what am I trying to say? We are going to be uh, carving air for that first three eighths of an inch. Yes, to answer your question on that. Um, on the, uh, if I decided not to include, or if I wanted to include these vectors for that first pocket cut, then they would be all the way up and then I wouldn't be carving air all the way down, right? But when I create my tool path, this is where we talk about understanding G code a little bit because the 3d rough cut doesn't have a start depth, right? doesn't necessarily have a start depth and, and things like that. Um, so it is going to be carving air unless I go in on my controller software and I scroll down my G code to that, uh, end of that, uh, you know, three eighths of an inch cut that air cut. And then I start the project, the 3D rough cut from there. So I'm just, you know, cutting down, right? I could do that. Um, I could, you know, skip that whole half. It's called bookmarking. I could bookmark just the section that I want to carve and just carve that section without carving air in the top. Uh, and that's, again, uh, go back uh, if you didn't see that class on understanding G-code, but we can skip that first half where it's carving air and start when it, where it's going to actually carve the material in the G code. So we don't have to start right at the beginning. So that's how we would handle that. Um, let's see here. What's rest machining mean? Heard that term a lot. So in Aspire, uh, we have what's called rest machining. Uh, what that means is we are carving a 3D model uh, with a larger bit and all the detail areas where that bit cannot reach, we can go back and do the rest of that model with the smaller bit to go back and just touch up those detail areas where the bigger bit could not get into, right? So it's rest machining. We're using, we're, we're, we're reducing our time and cutting a, uh, uh, a uh, larger bit, you know, for our, you know, 3D cut. And then we're coming back with a smaller bit and doing the rest of the design with that smaller bit so it can get down in those detail areas and it's not re-carving that whole 3D model again. That's what rest machining means. Um, uh, Kool-Aid. Uh, let's see here. Uh, make two copies, then glue together, right? Uh, Carl says, hey, make two copies of your sign and glue them together, right? Uh, you know, uh, that would be a way to go. Um, if I was doing this as an outdoor sign, I would be using HDU foam, high density urethane uh, foam. Uh, and sign foam, and uh, I I probably would uh, do that where uh, I carve two separate signs and I glue them together because I can adhere that HDU. I can seal two pieces together very well to make one big sign, uh, rather than trying to just carve the whole thing on a two-sided project as a block. So that's a good idea. Uh, that's one way to approach it, right? And uh, we got to move on, guys. Let's see here, Brooks Martin, when the bit. When the bit's too big to get into the detail car. Oh, okay. Rest machining. He was answering that. Laney, how long does this take to cut out? Oh, Ronnie. Ronnie's my favorite guy. He always asks me how long a project takes to carve out. Uh, this project is probably going to take a while based on my speeds and feeds. I have a 2440 digital wood carver. 
Uh, let's see here. Let's go into our times. And uh, this carving is about a 16 hour carving based on my speeds and feeds. Now, if you have a big industrial machine, more rigid, you can run a lot faster. You can reduce that dramatically and things like that. But about at this, this style, this design here, about 16 hours uh, to carve. It's 32 inches by 24, uh, multi-level design with all that detail. Uh, let's see here. Very last thing. Um, would your material depth have to be increased if you're carving uh, to a depth of 0.75 on a one inch thick board? Yeah, Bruce, that's what I said. If we were doing it as a two-sided project, my material is either going to have to get thicker or I'm going to have to reduce my pocket cut depths uh, so that when I do both sides, I still have some wood in the middle, right? So I'm either going to have to reduce my pocket depths and alter the cut depths of the side one and side two, or I'm going to have to make my material thicker, right? And then uh, using tabs, uh, you could flip using the waist uh, and support uh, when flipping tabs. Yeah, and we have an outside board here. Um, we have an outside profile cut. If we put tabs on there, which we would, uh, then when we flip it over, we have this is our spacer, right? So this board has been cut, so it will support it, right? And level it and everything. So that's another way to go too. All right, guys, let's uh, quickly go over and I'm gonna take all of these vectors here. Okay, I'm gonna take all these vectors. Let's turn off these two models here. Take all these vectors and I'm gonna copy those. Copy. I'm actually going to export them out. Export out as a DXF. And just call this uh, high end sign. And I didn't spell incorrectly, but that's okay. And now we're going to reduce this down. We're going to go into Vetric Aspire. And we're going to model this really quickly. Show you about making models. Uh, create a new file. This file is going to be 24 by 32 by 1.5 inches. 1.5. Uh, material surface, bottom left corner. And I'm sorry, I'm going to stop there because I want to hold the shift key down when I click create a new file. Because when I come in here, I want to have a extremely high resolution. I want to have that option. So holding the shift key when I click create a new file, that gives me those two additional options of extremely and maximum because I'm building a model now and I want to build it in an extremely high resolution. All right, so uh, let's change this to 1.5 and click OK. All right, let's import our DXF file. Go to downloads, high end sign. There we go. Let's go ahead and get this uh, centered on the material. There we go. And now let's go into our modeling tools. Wonderful, our modeling tools here. And let's turn off some layers to begin with. Always start with your foundation. Uh, so uh, let's turn off some layers. There we go. All right, our foundation, uh, this is uh, here. Uh, we're going to build it up to that, um, remember that first pocket, right? Uh, we we uh, cleared off three eighths of an inch. So it's gonna be one and three eighths of an inch is gonna be the thickness of this, it's gonna be a flat pocket. Uh, 1.375 and uh, we're going to uh, we'll call this our base right B A S E and click apply let's split our view so we can see what we're doing here okay so there is our base all right off to a good start so far uh, on this inner vector and of course always 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 um, Click start a new component before you go select another vector. Start a new component. That way it locks that one in. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's come in here and turn that uh, layer off. There we go. All right. On this vector here, this is what is getting reduced down. It's getting uh, cut down uh, three-eighths of an inch, right? Another three-eighths. So this is going to be a, a flat uh 
shape 0.375 and uh, it's going to be a minus. We're going to click apply. Okay, create that. All right, uh, let's go in and open up some more vectors here. Our inner layers. A missing. All right, start a new component. Perfect. All right, on this shape here, uh, this, 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 these shapes here, we're going to add, uh, we're going to build them up, build them up, uh, and uh, we're going to build them up uh, to three-eighths, uh, or we could build them up to a quarter, give ourselves even more levels, right? Uh, I'm going to go uh, 0.375. That way they're kind of flush with the top of this trim right here. This is going to be adding. So we're adding these back into this layer here. Click apply. All right, to build that shape back up. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and... Um, Close, not close. Uh, our upper profile here. Uh, let's turn off some layers so we can see what we're grabbing. Uh, let's see, those layers don't belong. All right, wonderful. This upper profile here, we're going to build that up now. Uh, so that's going to be a flat shape again. Uh, three eighths of an inch, 0.375. However, uh, I'm adding, right? If I were merging, if I were merging, then I would need to go this inch and three eighths plus three eighths, right? So uh, my, uh, but um, we're adding this. So apply. Okay. That creates that level there. Okay, so now we're, we're here. Um, start a new component. And of course, down here, my uh, three shapes that I created, I forgot to hit start a new component. And uh, let's uh, put them back. Bear with me a second. This one, this one, and that one. Same principles. Click apply to put those back down there. Always click start a new component uh, so you don't lose your vectors are created. All right. Um, okay, so this pocket here, I'm going to go ahead and select that pocket. I'm going to select, uh, let me turn on all my profiles just to make sure I'm selecting the right profiles. I'm actually going to select this profile here, this profile here, and this profile. And we're going to go, uh, remember my cut depth here was 0.2. So it's going to be 0.2, and it's going to be a subtract. Click Add. There we go. All right, so that gives us that. And now what I would like to do is the one thing I like about the modeling, it's gonna be a longer runtime and all, but I have the ability to kind of give myself a little bit of what's called a draft on these parts here. Uh, and so I'm gonna close this out. We'll finish uh, building up the vectors in just a minute, but I wanna turn off all of, uh, I wanna leave that pocket on. I wanna turn off the base. I want to turn off No, nope, leave that on number 2 Okay. So I have just these shapes here and uh what I want to do with this is I want to go up and add a draft and I want to add 
In this case, I'm gonna go with a uh, 22 degree draft and click apply on those visible models. Okay. All right, and so what that does is uh, you can see here, it kind of creates this angled edge, right? You know, this little angled edge here gives it a little bit of meat. All right, let's close that tool. Now you're gonna see it says model with draft, right? So I already have a model with draft, so these three things can be turned off. Okay. We can go ahead and turn our uh, base back on. Our base back on. Okay, so that's our base. And on this model with draft, it's set to a merge right now. We're gonna call it an add. So we're adding it to that base. Okay. And uh, we're also going to, um, and I should have separated the lower from the upper ugh, uh, because I need to turn on this vector here and it's gonna hide these guys down here. So bear with me, let's see if I, oh, that's the wrong one. Component number two. When component number two gets added, this is gonna be, nope, nope, it did it right. Okay, I'm happy. All right, so now my edges have a nice um, edge around them and everything uh, with that chamfer. All right. So everything looks good, wonderful, all that wonderful jazz. Now I could get fancy with this and uh, and do um, uh, raised letters and all uh, here. Uh, and how we would do that is uh, we would have a pocket cut. Uh, let's select this in Spindle TV. And in our shape tool, we're going to subtract this shape uh, and I want to give this I want to just use this uh, we're going to subtract this flat shape and we're going to go down an eighth of an inch 0 0.125 125 click apply uh, it's a subtract sorry uh, and let's do the inner circle here with that triangle. So I got these three vectors selected here and click apply. Okay. All right. So we have this kind of what's happening here. Okay. Um, that looks fine. All right. Spindle TV Productions. This one now is not going to be a flat add, and I did it again, it! Always click, always click, uh, start a new component. All right, let's uh, fix that. Oops. Okay, cool beans. Uh, start a new component. Select Spindle TV Productions. Now this one is gonna have a curved profile. It's gonna have, I'm gonna go with a, uh, see here, 45 degree curved profile. Uh, I want it to have a base height of that eighth of an inch. 0.125, but I want the top of the letters to have a round over and be flat, so I wanna limit this height. So what I'm saying is, is curve this profile up 45 degrees, but when you get to a certain height, flatten off at the top. And I'm gonna limit this height to a 30 second. 0.03125. And this is gonna be an add And we're going to click apply. All 
All right, so looking here, that that 45 degree, it didn't quite flatten out, right? It didn't quite flatten out because my uh, limit to height was a little bit too much. So I'm gonna actually divide, I'm gonna go 0 0.015 and click apply. And that should give me this kind of uh, flat top with these little rounded over edges. Uh, this will look different here in just a minute when we clean everything up. All right, start a new component. Actually, no, we don't start a new component. Um, that's our that's our model. There. Uh, now all we need to do is do the VCAR vectors. So, and I could, all right, well here, let's, uh, let's do one more component. Let's go this, this custom woodworking, this, this inner vector and this here. And let's go with a flat profile. I'm going to go an eighth of an inch. Subtract. Click apply. We're going to subtract it. Click apply. Let's go back to our split view. All right. So we have this kind of uh, raised. But now, again, what I'm going to do is on that last toolpath or that last model that I just created there, I'm going to turn off all the other models, uncheck and turn them off, the visibility, except for Spindle TV Productions. Where's that one at? That's this one. So those two I'm going to leave on and I'm going to turn off everything else. Alright, and so I'm just left with this stuff here. And notice that... Um, on the since 2012, uh, this area here, it's not going to create what I want to create uh, exactly right. So I'm going to turn that off for now. We're going to come back and fix that because I want to add a draft to the custom woodworking. But I can't because it's kind of a negative. It's a negative. So I want to turn that off uh, to where um, the only thing visible is Spindle TV Productions. And I'm going to add a draft to it. And let me zoom in on this so you can see what the draft does. And on this one, uh, we'll go with a 22 degree draft. It's going to take those straight wall edges there and bring them out. Kind of give it some depth. And everything, and then when my when my ball nose is cutting, it can now ramp up and around instead of stop, go straight up, over, down. It can just ramp up, down, and on. That's going to help speed up my toolpath as well. So let's close that. Okay. Now what we're going to do is uh, this component here. We're going to delete and we're going to recreate it because I don't want to do it the way that I did it. What I want to do is I want the inner boundaries, oops, inner boundaries, Laney, there we go. I want those to be a flat eighth of an inch down, subtract, click apply. Okay. And then my text I want that adding back in. 
creating two separate components. And the reason why is now I can turn off the Spindle TV production, turn off the pocket, and I'm left with the CNC training here and uh, the custom woodworking, and I can add the draft to that visible model, the visible model, the only thing showing, right? Uh, so can add that in. We're gonna smooth all this out to get rid of all that roughness and all and everything, uh, but let's close that. And now let's turn on all of our models and take a look at what we've got. So turn on our base. Okay, uh, let's turn on this combine mode is going to be an add. This pocket is going to open that pocket up. Oops, not that one. Number seven. It's nice if you name your components, but uh, I, I didn't name them. So there we go. So now we have that uh, kind of recessed design with that raised text. And the text looks really nice and, and clean. You know, the edges look a little rough because of the preview simulation quality. But uh, let's go back up here and let's turn on um, Component number two. And uh, this is going to be an add mode. And that should recess my Spindle TV production down. There we go. And the play button. All right. So the only thing we have left is the lion. Uh, on the lion, what we're gonna actually do with the lion here is uh, this is gonna be reduced down. This pocket here is gonna be reduced down. Uh, and um, we can do that with a V-carve toolpath. We do not need to model it. So we're going to select our lion and everything here. And do it as a V-carve toolpath. My model, it's saying my model is exceeding the thickness of my material. Uh, bear with me, let me do the math real quick and see where I overshot. I think it was on my base height. Let's see, this overall height should be one and a half inches. This should be dropped down uh, three eighths to one and an eighth. There we go. This should be dropped down to three quarters. So what is standing up above my one and a half inches to make it? Because that's one and a half. My model is one and a half, buddy boy. Where do you get one and three quarters? Something's higher than something. Bear with me. We're going to click on. So I can look down the edge. Well, obviously, let's see here. Aha, it's these vectors here. These vectors here, these three. So my pocket area right here, which is
Now I'm just gonna reduce my base down. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm trying to look at the hard way of doing it, but just reduce the base down. Uh, instead of one and three eighths, I need to come down, uh, I'm at one and three quarters, I need to come down a quarter of an inch. So one and one eighth, 1.125. There we go. Okay, now I should be right where I need to be. Okay. And uh, we'll click OK. And the lion is what I was working on. The lion. You're lion. All right, the lion here. Uh, let's. Uh, I'm gonna do an eighth of an inch. Point one two five. Calculate. All right. Whoa, there, boy. Okay. Now let's create a 3D finish cut or a 3D rough cut. We only need a 3D rough cut Bear with me. All right, before we do the 3D, let's create our pocket cuts. Sorry, pocket cuts, guys. Sorry about that. All right, for our pocket cuts, uh, we're gonna let a 2D toolpath mill away all the flat areas and everything, right? We're gonna let that mill all that material away and stuff uh, so that we can just focus on the 3D models to minimize our run time. So what we're gonna do is, uh, let's turn off this VCarve toolpath. Let's go ahead and um, turn off our models for a minute. So that way we only have the vectors here because we're gonna use those. See here. What model is that? Okay, that model that I just turned off, that was those pocket areas. Okay. This is the text. All right. This pocket cut down here, this pocket cut down here, uh, is three quarters of an inch deep. So I need to, if you see the model, remember that draft that we created? It, it expands beyond our original vector here. So I need to offset these outside vectors. We're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna call this our pocket offsets. Offsets. And we're going to go into, and I'll get to your questions, guys. Uh, we're going to go into our pocket offsets and go into the offset tool. It's under the drawing tab. And we're going to offset those three vectors outward. Um, and I'm going to go an eighth of an inch and see where we land here. You know, I'm looking at this light gray area. So I'm going to offset outward and boom. Almost nailed it. I'm gonna go a little bit more, let's undo that. I'm gonna go 0.13. That way I'm sure to be past that area, good. All right, now that vector, those selected vectors there, okay, 
And again, I'm getting this crazy. Let's turn off the model. Let me show you what, when I offset that outward, let's turn off the model for a minute. Got this crazy vector right here, right? Weird. Um, that uh, kind of, you know, combined all of this and everything. And I don't want that. Uh, what I need to do, if you remember what we did last time, is I need to go into node edit mode. That's a, oh, not that. Don't do that. Um, that's a weird glitch. I got to figure out what that is. I'll let you know next week what I find uh, on that one. That's, that's a weird one. But I need to extend these nodes outward so I can trim with the scissors to separate that. I'll have to investigate that uh, next week when we're talking about tips and stuff. Okay, long story short, let's take uh, this outer vector here, this outer vector here. Let's make sure where I trim that they are closed, they are. This outer vector there and this inner pocket right here. That is gonna be a pocket tool path it is going to be uh, starting at 3 eighths of an inch down, 0.375, cutting down additional 3 eighths for a total of 3 quarters with a quarter inch end mill. We're going to calculate that. Okay. Uh, we're going to take our let's turn off that toolpath for a minute so I can see what I'm doing here. Uh, where is my lower pocket vectors right here? We're going to take this here, right? Uh, and this is going to be a full, full on pocket cut. No other vectors in the middle of it. Full on pocket cut, cutting down three eighths of an inch from zero from the top of the board. Okay. That's going to be the very first tool path in the list, followed by the second pocket. All right. And then our 3D, uh, let's do the top area first as well. Okay, we need not that one, that one, that vector, this vector, sorry and make sure my outside vectors are selected, that, that, and that. Now on these three items here, if I look at the 3D view of the model, okay, um, let me turn the model back on. If I look at the 3D view of the model, I say that, but it doesn't turn on. Bear with me a second. There we go. Um, there was no, there was a draft on those outer vectors there. There was a draft. So I need on these three vectors, I need to offset them just like we did a moment ago outward. And I'm going to go 0.13. Okay. That's good. And then I'm going to select this inner pocket and those three vectors, and that's going to be a pocket tool path. And that is cutting point two inches deep. I believe I went point two, right? Point two. Point two. Quarter inch end mill. Calculate. Okay. All right, let's get into a better split view here. We can close that side for a minute. Let's preview what we've got so far. These are our initial 2D pocket cuts. Okay. 
It's our initial 2D pocket cuts. Now let's turn off the color. Okay. Now we're going to uh, select this outer vector, this outer vector, and this outer vector. Down here as well, let's turn on those layers also. This outside, this outside, and this outside. And this is going to be our 3D rough and 3D finish cuts. Okay. Um, and so we're going to go... We need to do one level at a time, possibly. Let me think. It's not like what we did before. No, we just uh, need to do a 3D rough cut. Quarter inch end mill using the selected vectors as the boundary. We're going to calculate that tool path. And it's just going to focus on those selected area model areas. Okay, so we're going to preview that visible toolpath. That's going to do the rough cut. Okay. And the 3D finish cut. Using the selected vectors as the boundary, I want the bit to be able to go past the boundary by uh, to be able to go past the boundary by uh, I'm going to go 0 0.1875 uh, 3 16 so that way it blends it in with those pockets and everything and we're going to calculate. Using an eighth inch tapered ball nose. Um, uh, for this, uh, the detail is not so small that I need, really need, uh, you know, like a 16th or anything. But a 16th would probably give me a little bit better detail than my 8th inch. But, um, I don't know. So basically, here's the alter, here's the, the, the gist of it all, guys and girls. With the first one, we did it as creating vectors and just creating the pocket and V carve tool pass to get all the levels we wanted, right? S version number two, we built the sign up as a 3D model. We literally built model components to build this sign. Uh, we're using pocket and V carve tool pass uh, to uh, be quicker, you know, on this model. And then we're using our 3D model tool pass to um, do just focus on the 3D work, you know? So we're gonna preview uh, the visible toolpath here. And uh, so we have, you know, this nice uh, look at sign. And our final cut is the profile cut. So where are you hiding at, Mr. Profile Cut? Art. All right, profile cut, cutting all the way out. Now, we built this model based on this profile, so we should use we could use this profile very easily. Um, and uh, it's going to cut all the way through the material that 1.5 inches. Okay. If we did not have that vector for whatever reason in our modeling tools, we would come in and create a boundary around the model, right? So it would create that vector boundary around that model. Now, um, we talked about doing our separate last pass, right? We're using a quarter inch end mill. We're cutting on the outside of the line and we're going to do a separate last pass. And again, I'm going to go 0.015. And I'm going to calculate this. And what this is going to do is use an end mill, not a V bit. 
<laughs> Quarter inch end mill. There we go. All right, 0 0.015, not 0015, 0 0.015. We're going to calculate that last pass. And what you will see if we were to, uh, let me see if I can get maximize view here, turn this flat and tilt it just a little bit. It's hard to see, but the first uh, seven passes on this are going to be cutting away from the line by 0.015 inches, so 150 thousandths of an inch, uh, 150 thousandths. And um, the very last pass is gonna come up to the line and cut that full depth of cut so that it gets rid of our little witness marks, our step marks, our pass marks, and everything. Um, so let's preview that visible toolpath. All right, I didn't add tabs to this for preview purposes only, um, but you know we have uh, you know the sign here, and of course, man, we could really embellish this up a whole lot more, uh, you know, by adding more models and some flourishes and things like that, but. Just wanted to uh, give you that um, kind of, let's uh, preview all the tool pass, reset and preview all the tool pass on this 2D version. And almost done, almost done, almost done. Let's get that turned up. My window's a little scrunched, but you get the idea. Okay, so one sign, two ways, right? Two different looks, two different cuts, and everything. And uh, you know, one we are using model components. We have a spire. We're building models. Right, and the other we're creating vectors and we're doing pocket and V carve tool pass, pocket and V carve tool pass to create those levels. Uh, and um, as I said on this one here, about a 16 hour run. Well, let's uh, see what our uh, this one here is about a 19 hour run, so about a three hour time difference on the run times, you know. But again, I'm using a, you know, uh, uh, my speeds and speeds are very conservative and all. So, you know, you could uh, look at something like that, you know, for, uh, you know, kind of compare the two and see which way would be better for you. And, you know, if you ever did assign, you know, creating the vectors and stuff and kind of doing it as the pocket and V carve way, you could take those vectors and transfer them over and create models with them, right? So you can kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison kind of thing or what have you. But uh, one sign, two ways. Um, and uh, I don't know why this sign looks a little squ so squished, uh, you know, and all. Uh, we're missing, hold on a second, I'm missing that. Bear with me a minute. There it is. Okay, so that's the finished sign. This one's got color and paint. This one doesn't. Uh, if I were to color this one in, it would kind of uh, uh, fill in black like that and it wouldn't look good. But uh, so yeah, one sign, two ways, right? All right, everybody. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, again, another three hour class, man. I need to start figuring out uh, how to pace myself and not try to do too much. 
Uh, I could have just done a class on making this one sign and you guys would have been just satisfied with that, right? Uh, uh, you know, but I didn't have to go in and do a whole detail on the how to make another sign and turn it into a three hour class. I apologize. I'm working on that. I'm working on my timing because I know it gets boring after a while. Uh, but I appreciate each and every one of you for sticking in. If you liked this and if you learned anything, a little something, a little tidbit of something, uh, hit that uh, thumbs up button. Uh, you know, that like button. I appreciate it. Uh, if you're new here, uh, subscribe. Uh, and uh, we do classes like this each week. Uh, some weeks I might have to reschedule for something, but uh, generally it's every Tuesday night. And uh, my last, uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, next week we're going to do a little bit of a kind of a, I won't say pro tips video, but a tips video uh, training class. And we're going to go, I'm going to go through some of uh, most of all the tips uh, that I know that uh, they're going to be, it's going to be a, not a very long class, but all the tips I know that may help you create cleaner cuts, uh, reduce times, uh, run times and things, and uh, just have a better understanding with your designing things that you can do. You saw some of the little tips and tricks like node editing and moving around and stuff uh, tonight, but uh, we're going to cover some things in detail. Look how we can optimize our G-code a bit, uh, you know, by doing certain things in the design program. We're going to do that next week. Join us for that, and hopefully you enjoy it. And with that being said, let's see, make sure I didn't answer any questions or miss any questions. All right. Thank you very much. Now, uh, the both are pretty much virtually the same sign, just so you know, uh, other than the text here is V carved in, right, in those areas. And the text here is raised up, right? So, uh, you know, that's pretty much kind of the difference. And also, uh, this is, these are kind of straight pockets. Uh, these have a little bit of a chamfer to the edge. And of course, ignore the tool marks. Uh, we'd use a smaller bit. My eighth inch bit kind of made it look a little rough, but uh, you know, this is where you kind of go through and figure out rest machining and stuff like that, which we talked about in past videos. Uh, there's videos all over. Uh, and a uh, little hint, V11 is coming out soon, and uh, rest machining function uh, is uh, going to be included in, with that in the rest machining function. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be in uh, all three projects, uh, you know, Desktop Pro and Aspire, but I know it's definitely going to be in Aspire. All right, everybody, until next time. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks for all the kudos and compliments and all that stuff. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for the subscribe. Until next time, y'all have a great evening, okay? Thanks. 50 thumbs up. Thanks, guys and girls. We appreciate it. Bye now.